see how this works. What we're going to do is we're going to travel back in time 4.5 billion years, and we're going to zoom in. We've been looking at the universe so far in this course. We're going to zoom in on one rather average galaxy, the Milky Way. We're going to zoom in on one tiny part of it, and we're going to look at the birth of our solar system. Now, our sun formed like any other star from the collapse, collapse of a cloud of matter under the pressure of gravity. That collapse, like many others, was probably triggered by a huge supernova explosion somewhere in our region of the Milky Way. And that supernova explosion also seeded this cloud with lots of new materials from other supernovae and from dying stars. As the cloud collapsed, it began to spin, like a spinning pizza dough. And as it spun, it slowly flattened out to form a disk. Now, this is something that happens throughout the universe, which is why the universe is full of flat disks, from the Milky Way itself to our solar system, even to the rings around Saturn. Astronomers call this sort of disk a protoplanetary disk, or a proplid. Now, as the proplid that eventually formed our solar system began to collapse, at its center it got hotter and hotter and hotter until eventually fusion began and our sun was born. About 99% of all the material in the proplid went into the sun. 99.9% .9 in fact. That leaves 0.1% for the rest of the solar system. All that stuff was orbiting around the sun and amazingly that tiny residue is what formed all the rest of the solar system. Now, let's begin by looking at the outer gassy planets and how they were formed. The intense heat of the young sun drove away gassy materials from the inner parts of the solar system. And above all, it drove away a lot of hydrogen and helium, leaving that as a region deprived of hydrogen and helium. And all that gassy material gathered further out in the solar system and eventually condensed to form the gassy giants. They are Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Now, they contained about 99% of the leftovers. So what we're left with is a tiny residue of a tiny residue to form the inner rocky planets, including our Earth. Closer to the Sun, from that tiny residue of a residue, you find material orbiting, orbiting in the inner orbits. And that material is less gassy, there's more sort of solid stuff you have little dust motes that eventually will gather together through electrostatic forces or collisions to form little rocks. You have particles of ice that will eventually form snowball-like objects, and eventually they form things like meteorites or asteroids, and they're getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and they're colliding with each other. And in each orbit, you eventually get large objects that finally sweep up through their gravitational pull, everything else that's in the orbit. And so eventually, over 100 million years, in each orbit, you have a rocky planet. Now this process is called accretion. It's extremely violent. There's a huge amount of space stuff smashing into other space stuff. And if you want to be persuaded how violent it was, get out a pair of binoculars and look at the moon one night and look at those craters. Those are evidence of how violent the process of accretion was. Our moon was probably created when an object, perhaps the size of Mars, collided with our Earth, our young Earth, and it gouged out a huge chunk of the Earth. And that stuff orbited around the Earth and slowly accreted to form the object that we call the Moon. So in this way, through these processes, over about 10 to 20 million years, our solar system formed. And we end up with a solar system that has inner rocky planets in the inner orbits, these large gassy planets in the outer orbits, and woven through them, lots of space debris. It includes meteorites, asteroids, and comets.